Good afternoon once again, everybody. Can you all hear me? Can you wave your hands, please? Thank you so much. Welcome on this Saturday afternoon. It's a fine day in Singapore down under in Malayan City. Welcome to today's session. This name is Wally Rauder. I have been an academic for more than 35 years, 38 years. It's my pleasure to be talking to you today about conformity in business. That's correct, conformity in business. Does anybody here know what I mean by the word conformity? Who can tell me what does conformity mean? Can anyone give me an idea of what they understand by the term conformity? Okay, let's try Amy. Amy, go ahead. Good afternoon, Amy. What does conformity mean? Unmute your microphone. Hello, let's go ahead. Sir. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so what does conformity uh, mean? It's regarding the unity of the persons inside the group or a kind of how they react towards their co-worker if it is inside the business. Okay, that's a very good answer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay, let, let me hear from somebody else. Who can give me an answer on conformity? Go ahead, uh, Shaquille. Are you there, Shaquille? Can you unmute your microphone? Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. What is conformity in business? Yeah, I think conformity means that to fit in with the to fit in to, with the crowd and to go with something which is considered usual or norm in our society. Very good answer. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. So basically, conformity is, as uh, our two students have said here today, conformity is when you try to do something just to fit in the crowd. And unfortunately, in business, that's one of the most dangerous things you can do because if you do things just to fit in, then your business will never be successful. You'll fail. Because if you're a copycat of other business or you try to copy someone else just so you can be popular, you're a fake. So all those people who go and open coffee shops and think they're Starbucks will never be Starbucks because Starbucks is Starbucks. Its green logo is Starbucks. The ambience, the coffee beans that Starbucks have are different to every other coffee bean that every other coffee shop uses because Starbucks roasts its own coffee beans. So if you try to conform and try to be another Starbucks, your coffee chain is gonna die. But if you try to build a coffee chain that's unique and you offer coffee, which Starbucks doesn't offer, you have a chance of success. Unfortunately, a lot of the companies that fail today more than ever fail because they're fewer copycats. Does anybody know a company that tried to copy another company and failed? Who can give me an example? Anyone? Give me an example. A company that you used to go to, but they started copying another company, they weren't as good and they failed. Can you give me an example? Anyone? No? All right. So you all understand what I mean by conformity. Let me put on my PowerPoint presentation and let's go from there. I think Mary Ann. Maranon has left the class and she's left her camera on. Uh, hopefully she'll come back. All right, so let's talk about conformity. Okay, so to conform in business, conformity in business, what does it mean? Conformity is the process whereby people change their beliefs, attitude or actions or their perceptions to more closely match those held by groups to which they belong or want to belong or by groups whose approval they desire. That's individual conformity. That is business trying to conform. But unfortunately, if business tries to copy what another brand does well, it will fail. Because for the other brand to get to where it was, there must be something they're doing which you might not be able to do, or it's going to take you a long time to learn to copy. Eventually, you'll fail. So. Conformity is when we try to do things simply for the sake of doing them, thinking that we will have the upper hand. That's not always the case. All right. Conformity is the act of changing your behavior in order to fit in or go along with the people around you. Same with businesses. It's about coffee shops trying to conform so they can be as successful as Starbucks. Eventually, they fail. Let's look at the two pictures. All the other people are wearing stripes. They conform to fit into the group. 
However, the girl with the backpack and the ballerina skirt has been left out. She doesn't conform. She doesn't fit into that group. I want to re leave you with some very few important words that I've developed over the last couple of years uh, speaking to business leaders and motivating business leaders. In a world that seems to prize conformity, organizations today find it tough to realize the courage to blaze their own trail. Does anybody know what I mean by that? Can anybody tell me what I mean by that? Shaquille, can you explain my quote? Go ahead, Shaquille. Can you explain my quote? Uh, sir, I couldn't look at it for long enough, so. <laughs> okay, I'll put it up again. Give me a minute. Tell me what does it mean, Shaquille? Are you there, Shaquille? Shaquille? Yeah, I think it means that the people who, uh, who whose trademark is to conform, they usually fail to create their own brand or fail to create their own uh, thing, you know? Like they, okay. if they conform most of the time, then they fail to create their own trademark. You're on the right track. Thank you, Shaquille. Good man. Trying good. Well, thank you. Okay, let's try someone else. Um, who can explain it? Uh, Don Quave, can you explain it? Don Quave, go ahead. Don Quave, how can you explain it to me? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, what I can understand is, uh, today we are living in a world that everybody is trying to do what somebody is doing. And therefore, uh, if someone wants to succeed, then he must go on his own way without uh, following what the public is doing. Absolutely right. So everybody should dig their own trail. You shouldn't try yeah. to follow somebody else's trail. When we are born as children, we try to emulate our parents. But when we graduate secondary school, we should stop trying to emulate our parents. We should try to set a new trail so your children can emulate you. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Okay, let's go on. Um, as I just said, you get rid of this. Um, in a world that seems to prize conformity, organizations, companies today find it tough to realize the courage to blaze their own trail and become famous or become a brand name for their own product or their own service standards. They're always trying to copy someone else. And eventually they fail. Conformity. In some cases, social influence might involve agreeing with or acting like the majority of people around you, or it might involve behaving in a particular way in order to be perceived as normal by the group or the group you're trying to fit into. What does conformity really mean? It means giving in to group pressure. Let me ask all you girls, when you used to go to school, when you used to go to school, you always used to wear um, dresses or skirts or whatever it was to look like or fit in with all your other girlfriends. Otherwise, you'd be left out of the group. Am I right? Yes or no? Wave your hands. Come on. Okay. But you were doing that because you wanted to fit in. You didn't want to be the only girl that walked around the school corridor without any friends, right? Yes or no? Come on, I did it. I used to wear Versace jeans to school because I wanted to fit in with the rich kids. I didn't have to, but I did. Yeah, I know, Amala, I know, I know. Amala used to do things to please his girlfriend so they'd marry him. But eventually one said yes. So now he doesn't have to conform anymore. Am I right, Amala? Okay, good, excellent. Can somebody else give me an example of how they used to conform when they were at school? Give me an example. Who can give me an example of conformity based on your behavior when you're at school? Who can give me an example? Who can give me an example? Can anybody give me an example? Come on. All right, we've got somebody. Rosanna, good on you, Rosanna. Open your microphone for me. 
Are you there, Rosanna? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. What like is an example case, of conformity? Go ahead. Like in my case, sir, I have three brothers who are black belters. Yes. In karate. Right. That's why and? I, I tried my best to be like them as well. Are you serious? Yes. All right. Were you ever able to meet their standard? Actually, I didn't join the competition, but at least I tried to train myself and join. All right. So let me ask you, if you play a game with your brothers, who's a better player, you or them? My second brother. Okay. At least you admit it. You're honest, right? Okay. So do you understand what I mean by conformity? Conformity can be good because you want it to fit in. Um, Rosanna was the only girl in her family. She wanted to fit in with her brothers, so she wasn't lonely. She tried to conform with their most popular game, which was rugby. Do you understand that? Yes or no? Okay, good. Um, my dear co-host, can you send a message to Mary Ann Marignon? Can you tell her that if she's not back in front of her camera, I'll be removing her from the class, all right? Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. Um, let's go to the next student, um, Maylin Duco. Maylin, tell me, Maylin, can you give me an example of conformity, Maylin? Go ahead, unmute your microphone. Good Hi. afternoon, everyone. <laughs> good afternoon. Said, most of my friends are very good in English as they are working in a BPO company. So I said, oh, if, our, if we go gatherings, my English is so lousy. So I try to enroll international school, then learning how to communicate with English so that I can fit in with them. It's like I won't be outcast if I yes. go with them. I can communicate with them. You are trying to fit into a group. You are trying to conform. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Can I ask you a question? Did you mm -hmm. find that by improving your English, do you still need to conform the way you dress or the way you talk to them? Or has the um, need for conformity gone away? Yeah, it's like I become, a, you know, like uh, an animal that have to transform. How you call that animal? It's like everywhere I go, I have to transform to fit in myself. Like All right. <laughs> but can I suggest to you, uh, Maylin, sometime we do that. But if you have the courage not to do it and to manage how you do it, you can be much more successful. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. Now, I do understand. I'm not telling you all to stop being conformative or to stop conforming, but you have to manage how much you conform. All right. Do not be pushed over the edge so you emulate someone else. All right. Let me ask you a question. Maylin, if you were going out with a bunch of girlfriends and one night you went to a nightclub, and one of your girlfriends said, oh, let's try this. And you found out she was going to smoke an illegal drug. Obviously, you would say no. Is that right? Yes. You would say no, yes, right? So you I wouldn't be silly. Sure. You would not be silly yeah. enough to conform, right? Yes, yes or yes. no? Okay, yes. good girl. All right. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, let me go to the next person here. I've got a, a beautiful smiling face that I haven't spoken to for ages. Jessalyn, how are you today, Jessalyn? Say hello to Wally. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Tell me, what's an example of conformity that you've been through? Well, when I was in college, I, my friends are member of the, our basketball team in in school. So, uh, I I I I tried to try out for the basketball, and I was able to join them. And then, uh, when I was being with them, I I. I figure out that they're not good influence. So eventually I decided to did go you continue away from play, them. Did you continue playing basketball or did you give up basketball as well? Did I you continue basketball. playing basketball or you gave it up? I gave it up after two years. <laughs> All right. Can I ask you a question? Did you enjoy <laughs> playing basketball or was it only because of them? Before. When they, when they, I started to join the the team, I'm not really into basketball. But when I was in in the team, I learned to love the the, the game team, the game. But and, but when I figure out that some of my friend, uh, some of my teammates are doing illegal, so 
I decided right. to. So, Jesslyn, you're a smart woman because you were able to say no. But a lot mm -hmm. of people conform simply to be popular, and that's where they run into trouble. Thank you, Jesslyn. Jesslyn, I'll speak to you again. Nice seeing you. Thank Keep you. on that beautiful smile. God bless you. Okay, let's uh, talk to someone else. I've got two more people here. The next one in the queue is Amal. Hello, Amal. Hi. Hello, sir. Tell me. Give me an example of conformity, please. Okay, sir. Uh, in school, when I was like in third grade, I used to go to uh, like I used to have some friends, and they used to like be very impressed of my English. So they used to like in impersonate me. They used to like you know talk like in my accent and talk in English like me. So I so that's what they used to do. Well, you should be proud. People were copying you. You weren't conforming <laughs> to anyone. They conformed to you. You should be very proud. Really. <laughs> I wouldn't be complaining about that. I wish people could emulate no, me like, and sir, conform it's annoying. to me. I mean, like, they, they shouldn't impersonate just to know that they can talk and they should make their own accent, talk in their own language. Like, they should be proud of what they are and proud of, like, you know, they should know that their language okay. they have. Absolutely. They should speak in their own voice. He, she, yeah. They talk, but they should speak in their own voice, right? Yeah. So thank you for saying that. It's a great example. Thank you. Thank I'll you, come sir. Back to you. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go to the next person. Who else have we got here? Let's uh, say hello to Raquel. Hello, Raquel. Welcome back. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Tell hello. me, what's your example of conformity? Yeah, um, I will... Um... Give an example. When I was in college, I um, back home, I was studying in university, and then I saw um, a lot of girls who start to join the Taekwondo, you know. And you know, in the Philippines, in Manila especially, you have to at least um, know uh, self defense because you know it's not that safe at all, you know. Back then, when I was uh, in, in college, and I, 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 I think I till until now. So I tried the basic, but because of the hectic schedule, I was uh, doing, a, I, I'm going to school in the morning and work at night. So I didn't uh, continue the, the course, but then there's a lot of, some basic that I've learned, you know? Yeah, because of okay. the of friends that pushed me to, to do, the, to do the, the, the Taekwondo. So I did join them, but really it's, um, it's really a big help for us, especially uh, ladies. Right. And do you still know how to do Taekwondo? No, not at all. Okay. Did you enjoy did you enjoy learning Taekwondo? Yeah, but I learned only the basic because of the hectic schedule. I was working at night and then um going to school in the morning, I cannot able to continue. I don't have a time. Okay. No problem. Thank you for that great example. When I was at school, I had to conform. I used to go to a boarding school. My parents sent me to a good school. And I hated playing rugby. I had to learn how to play rugby. I used to get pushed on the football field. And these great big friends of mine who were Maori students at Auckland Grammar School, one of the most exclusive boys boarding schools in New Zealand or in the Australia-New Zealand um, joint pack, uh, I used to be jumped on them and sat on them and squashed. And the smell of under their armpits when they used to push you over used to be disgusting. I used to go back to the shower and use double dose of soap. But I had to conform. If I didn't play rugby with them, I'd be the only boy staying the boarding house that no one talks to. Because over there, if you wanted to be one of the boys that passed and become a prefect and to be one of the school's famous names, you had to play rugby. So I know what you went through. So thank you all for sharing your experience of conformity. Let's go on with my presentation, please. So as I said, basically conformity is you giving in to peer pressure as per the examples you all just shared with me. Okay, let's just start. Okay, let's go on. In some instances, we have a habit of conforming to the expectations of the group in order to avoid looking foolish, okay? It, it was it's a fact you all do it i know that when you girls used to go out with your girlfriends at night probably you had to tie your hair when you're at school and as soon as you left school you released it you took off the ribbon or took out the hair clip so your hair hangs and you look sexy and young when you go out and walk around the street it was because you were conforming 
to fit in with your friends outside school after school. This tendency can become particularly strong in situations where we are not quite sure how to act or where the expectations are ambiguous. Imagine you start a new job. And when you go to work, Amal, everybody in the company is wearing lots of makeup. But you're not wearing makeup. You're not used to wearing makeup. So Amal might find that if she doesn't wear makeup, some of her colleagues might get the wrong idea. She's poor. She can't afford makeup. She doesn't fit into the group. She doesn't fit into company culture or she doesn't want to be there. So obviously, Amal would start wearing makeup. Do you understand what I'm saying, Amal? Okay, Amal, good. So now let's talk about why people conform. Why do people conform? There is two or three different types of conformity. There's what we call informational conformity or informational influence, which causes you to conform. And this happens when people change their behavior in order to be correct. All right. So if you are going to work and all the girls at work are wearing a mini skirt and you always wear pants, but every time you walk around, everybody looks at you simply because you're wearing long pants, then you want to be correct. So you change to wearing a skirt because the company's dress code is that you wear a skirt. Number two, in situations where we are unsure of the correct response, we often look to others who are better informed and more knowledgeable and use their lead as a guide for our own behavior. So when I went to school and my father spent thirty. $40,000 every six months to send me to one of the world's best boarding schools. They all play rugby, so I suddenly had to start playing rugby. And for me, I would prefer to sit in my computer, play computer games, and go out on a football field and get covered with mud. That's me. But I had to conform because if I didn't conform, I wouldn't be doing the right thing. And then the school would write to my father and saying, Your son is not active, he doesn't play sport. Okay. Well, that was many years ago, not anymore. All right. So sometimes we conform just because we're too lazy to try to be correct in a different way. So instead of trying to learn what we need to do to be accepted, we just conform with the majority, even though you're not going to lose your job. The fact is you don't want to wear a skirt. You want to wear trousers. The point is that sometimes we find it too stressful to ask. Can I wear trousers or is a skirt a rule? So what we do is we follow the majority. In a classroom setting, for example, this might involve agreeing with the judgment of another classmate who you perceive as being highly intelligent. Like Amal gave us an example that all her friends tried to speak and emulate her when they spoke, all right? They tried to emulate her in their tone. Instead of her being proud of it, she got sick of it because people were trying to make themselves sound like her. What they should have done is learn how to speak good English in their own way, not try to copy Amal's accent or Amal's voice. If they tried to mock my voice, I would be upset as well. What I would say to them is, how about I help you in with your English, but you speak it with your own style. Then what you've done is you've taught them how to be better English speakers, but they retain their own style. Does everybody understand that? So the first um, reason for conformity is what we call informational influence. Okay, the other reason that people conform, and look at yourselves in the mirror, because you're all guilty of these. Normative influence stems from a desire to avoid punishments, such as going along with the rules in class, even though you don't agree with them. And again, gain rewards, such as behaving in a certain way in order to get people to like you. I'm sure when you were young girls, if you came home late, your daddy got very angry at you. So in order to keep daddy happy, you came home on time, even though you were unhappy because you couldn't be out there with your friends. Okay, so that's normative influence. And it's okay because your parents know what's best for you. But when we go into business, is normative influence a healthy thing to have? No, absolutely not. Because if you practice inf informational 
um, influence or normative influence in any business organization, what you're going to do is you're going to limit the amount of thought, the amount of eccentricity, the amount of activity that people will generate in order to make the business more profitable because they're afraid to do so because of the culture of normative influence and informational influence. So in actual fact, conformity is not only a sin for people if they don't manage the level of conformity, but it can bring a business to its downfall. Why people conform? Another reason is identification based on social roles. Let me give you an example. Give you an example. When soldiers join the army, they have to conform by wearing a uniform. Right? Why do they have to wear a uniform? Because the army dictates that they wear a uniform, right? Yes or no? Wave your hands, right? Okay, good. Let's talk about this. There was an experiment done by Stanford um, University called the Stanford Prison Experiment. In this controversial experiment conducted back in 1971, Philip Zimbardo simulated a prison setting to see how people's behavior would change according to the role they were given. One set of people wore a certain color uniform, they were the prisoners. The other set of people wore a different uniform and they were the prison guards or the prison officers. And what he discovered through extensive research and psychological analysis is that it showed that the behavior was affected by the expectations of the role. However, there are many criticisms of the experiment and its results. What the experiment showed is when a prisoner was put in a prisoner uniform and had his hands cuffed sometimes, he behaved more aggressively or went from being a confident person to a person who lacked confidence. He changed the way he behaved in order to conform with being a prisoner and not being punished by the prison guards. For the prison officer or the prison guard, when you gave them the uniform, they started adopting to the uniform and started becoming leaders or people who were there to punish people who were guilty of a crime who they looked down on as criminals. But as soon as they took that uniform off and walked out, their behavior changed. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Wave your hands. Now, the Stanford Prison Experiment has gone down as one of the benchmarks as far as identification as a reason for conformity. All right? You look at it. Look at soldiers. Okay? You know, their uniform is dictated. What time they wake up is dictated. How fast they run is dictated. How many push-ups they do is dictated. And if they don't conform, they don't march out. They fail and get thrown out of the army or the navy or whatever they're joining. So it's conformity. Do you understand that, everyone? Okay, let's go on. All right. The next conform method or reason of conformity is compliance. Compliance is changing one's behavior while still internally disagreeing with the group. For example, for example, if you look at school kids in Thailand up to about 10 years ago, they were only allowed to wear their hair in a certain way. Thai schools used to enforce certain hairstyles for girls and certain hairstyles for boys. School kids in Thailand had no choice. If they go to school with their hair that doesn't meet the standard, they were punished or sent home. So even though they didn't enjoy wearing their hair that way, if they wanted to go to school, they had no choice. So they had to do it in order to comply with the school rules. Now, the last government in Thailand 10 years ago realized that why should we do that? We want kids to feel happy when they go to school, so they study harder, so they change the law, all right? So, but why was conformity for these students? Were they doing it to fit into peer pressure? No, doing it because if they didn't do it, they couldn't go to school. That was compliance. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Wave your hands. Good, let's go to the next one. Okay. 
Internalization is another reason for conformity. Internalization is a type of conformity that involves changing one's behavior to be like another person. You might notice this in a friend whose taste in music or movies shifts to match the taste of their romantic partner. Let's talk to my dear colleague and boss here today, Mr. Amala. Are you here, Mr. Amala? Mr. Amala, did you change your choice of music when you married your wife? Yes? Did your wife dictate how you dress every day when you go out? And you're happy, right? Because now you've got a wife and someone to hug. Same as me, good man. All right, so Mr. Amala conformed. Why did he conform? Like all of you, when you get married one day, if you're not married, you will conform. Probably Shakil's wife had to make him conform with the way he dresses. She probably tells him what color socks to wear when he goes to work every day. She'll say, sweetheart, those socks are brown. You're wearing black trousers. People will laugh at you. Go and change your socks. Am I right, Shaquille? Wave your hand, Shaquille. Good, excellent. Amal, I'm sure when you go out sometimes, Amal, your mother will look at you and say, Amal, the skirt you're wearing is too short. Go and change it. Am I right, Amal? Good. I know, I know, I know. It's conformity. Do you understand what I'm saying, everybody, Samuel? Good, excellent. All right. So everybody understands about conformity. Let's go back. So internalization is you're trying to conform to meet your wife's expectations, to meet your mother and father's expectations. But Amal, let me tell you what my sister used to do. My sister was like you. So mommy and daddy used to tell her to wear a longer skirt below her knees in Australia, below her arm kneecap. And what she used to do is carry two skirts. So she used to go out wearing the long skirt. When she got to the shopping mall, she used to go and put on the short skirt to be with her friends so she can conform with her friends. Then before she came home, she put on the long skirt again. All right? So this is what we call internalization. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Good. Excellent. Let's go on. All right, let's look at forms of social influence that dictate conformity. What are the different forms of social influence? One, conformity, where behavior change in response to real imagined social pressure. Two is compliance, behavior, rate, sorry, behavior change in response to an explicit request or order. And obedience, behavior change in response to a demand. So if we go back to the Thai school children, okay, they had no choice. Because if they didn't do or wear their hair the way the school rules were, they weren't allowed into the school or they would be sent home, okay? But conformity in response to real imagined social pressure is not because you have no choice. Based on social pressure, you have the choice to follow it or not but you have to say, to what level will you follow? How far will you go? Will you break the law? No. Compliance, again, you don't have a choice. You have to do it. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. You'll get punished. And obedience, again, probably to be obedient to your parents, okay? Because you know if you don't do it, you'll suffer um, your parents, your mother or father giving you a hard time. So when we go to conformity, Conformity based on social pressure is basically, or social pressure is not really pressure. It's basically people saying, if you want to be part of us, you have to do this. Otherwise, they seem to ignore you or you don't fit in. But when it comes to compliance or obedience, it means you have no choice. Does everybody understand that, Amy? Good, excellent. Okay, influential factors. What influences our reason to conform? What are the influential factors psychologically required to make you conform? There is many of them. There's at least four of them. Let me talk to you about them. Number one, the difficulty of the task. Difficult tasks can lead to both increased and decreased conformity. Not knowing how to perform a difficult task makes people more likely to conform, but increased difficulty can also make people more accepting to different responses 
leading to less conformity. So influential factors can affect your level of conformity. How difficult is it? Is it too difficult? Then you walk away from it and try to find another way to conform. Individual differences. People's characteristics such as motivation to achieve and strong leadership abilities are linked with a decreased tendency to conform. However, if you were a school kid in Thailand and you thought that you looked better with your long hair, but you couldn't go to school with long hair because you'd be sent home or you'd be uh, basically uh, to told to go home or thrown out of the school or, you know, whatever. Um, you basically had the tendency, okay, you had the tendency of, to hate school simply because you weren't pre prepared to adapt that because your personal characteristics when you looked in the mirror is that you look better with your long hair. But they couldn't. Even though for school kids in Thailand they wanted to do that, they had no choice. So the other element of influential factors in conformity are individual differences. Some kids, they don't care. But for some kids, when they look in the mirror, their hairstyle might make their face look bigger, rounder, or fatter, or taller, or longer, or slimmer, or shorter. So it affected their appearance. And when they looked in the mirror and saw themselves looking like that, that also affected their ability to have the motivation or feel good about themselves so they could study. They were too worried about their appearance. Do you understand what I'm saying, everyone? Okay, good. Group size. People are more likely to conform in situations that involve between three and five other people. So, you know, if Amal goes out with two of her girlfriends and they all have black hair, that's fine. But if Amal goes out with four or five of her best friends and they all suddenly change their hair color to pink, then Amal would have to ask herself, do I really want to wear pink hair to conform? Okay, but if only one of the three girls had pink hair, then Amal will not feel the peer pressure to conform, all right? It's only when the group gets bigger and she's the odd one out. You understand that, Amal? Okay, the other influential factor, everyone, is situation. People are more likely to conform in ambiguous situations where they are unclear about how they should respond. So if you're scared, you haven't studied, or you don't know the answer, you might just use the same answer as everybody else. You just conform because you don't know, you're unsure. So what's the best way? Just be a copycat and conform with everyone else. Like Amma's friends, when they used to copy her English instead of learning English and speaking in their own way. Cultural differences are an influence. People from collectivists, cultures are more likely to conform. For example, if you go to China, you have to conform to the way the Chinese behave because you live in China. If you go to um, Australia, you would have to conform with the way people live in Australia. You know, there's a famous quote. If you want to go to China, live like the Chinese, right? Yes or no? If you go to Saudi Arabia as a woman, you have to cover your head. You have to cover your face in Qatar. In Saudi Arabia, they can see half your face or now your full face, but you still have to have your head covered. Because if you want to go to Saudi Arabia, you must follow the law because of their cultural differences. The culture in Saudi Arabia requires a woman to be covered. All right? Do you understand that? Everybody understand that? Yes or no? Good. All right. Conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. Does everybody understand what that means? Conformity is the jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. And this is more real about business. If a business tries to conform with its competitors, they are limiting their ability to be profitable. They are limiting their number of customers and they will forever suffer with a lack of growth. Do you all understand that, ladies and gentlemen? Let me give you an example. 
Amala and Tom are now listening to Justin Bieber despite hating his music with a passion. They hate it. They think he's the worst singer in the world. Amala and Tim are conforming publicly while privately disagreeing to please his wife or his girlfriend. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? All right, let's talk about conformity. Compliance is superficial and public change in behavior or appearance, not personal views, all right? So you change your appearance superficially simply to comply with the requirement. Internalization is deep and private change in behavior and personal views. So for compliance, as I said with the high school kids, they didn't wear short hair because they liked it. They wore it because otherwise they'd be sent home, all right, or expelled from school or punished. If they wanted to go to school, they had to comply. It was superficial. Do you understand that? But in their own hearts, they hated it. They didn't agree with it. Okay, let's look at the advantages of conformity. What are some of the advantages before I start talking to you again? Developing good habits, varied perspectives in life, makes a person more disciplined because you've learned from others. It gives you the feeling that you belong to a group and will reduce the number of social disagreements. And this was common in Thai schools because all the girls looked the same. They all had the same hair length and same hairstyle. So the girls couldn't say, oh, I don't want to see you walking with my group because you're not good looking like me. All right. Um, so basically it reduced social disagreement based on appearance, based on views, because they were conforming. And they were only conforming because they had to comply. It was compliance, which was the influence. Let's talk about disadvantages of conformity. When you conform to others, you lose your personal identity. The kids in Thailand lost their personal identity because they were forced to look in like someone else because they couldn't look the way they felt comfortable looking. It takes away the power to decide on things, how you should or when you should do things. It restricts your creativity because you are conforming to everybody else's rules. If somebody says to you, you're not allowed to do this, you should behave this way, that means you are no longer being allowed to think and do what you think can make you more successful. Conformity reduces your ability to social change, to promotion, and to success. And when you conform, basically you lack diversity, you lack a passion. Your passion will die because you find out that everything you want to do would not conform with your friends or with the organization you work for. So conformity in business is more disadvantageous then it is advantageous, especially if they take it too far. And I'll talk about this shortly. Let's talk about conformity in business. But before that, let me check. Does everybody understand what I just said? Does anybody want to ask any questions about anything I've just explained before we move on? Okay, Karen, do you want to ask any questions? Karen Lamia? Hi, Karen. Do you understand what I mean by conformity? Okay. All right. Good. Excellent. Yes, okay. I do. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next person. Um, who have I got here? Felix. Felix. Uh, Felix Lukaki. Hi. How are you today? Do you understand what I mean by conformity? Yes. Yes. I understand about the conformity. Conformity. You need to adhere to what the set of rules which has been established for you to follow, or a certain way of doing things in a certain locality. Fantastic. Very good. Thank you, mate. Talk to you again soon. Okay, let's talk to someone else. Samir Darwish. Hi, Samir. Are you there? I think Samir's camera is playing up. Okay, let's talk to Dennis. Where's Dennis today? Is he here? Dennis, darling, are you here? Good afternoon, sir. Tell me, do you understand what I said about conformity? Yes. Deeply okay. understand conformity. Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. Thank you, mate. Okay, let me go okay. to Simon. 
You're welcome. Samir Darwish, do you understand what I said about conformity? Yes. Okay. All right, good. Thanks, mate. Okay, go ahead. Huh? Okay. Okay, could you mute your microphone again, please, after you've spoken to me? Thank you. Okay, let's go back to my presentation. So conformity helps to unify the organization into behaving as one entity working towards a shared objective. So if you try to tell everybody that our company's mission, vision, and objectives are this, we're all working to become the best customer service company, it's okay. That level of conformity is accepted. In order to do this, companies need to have regulations and guidelines in place to help streamline and regulate output standards in order to maintain brand integrity. That is an acceptable level of conformity in business. However, what does, what does happen when the amount of conformity goes beyond acceptable level is that the business will lose its vision and it will restrict the people working for it from delivering the best results. Okay. Conformity in today's workplace includes, um, but is not limited to, these are just option, uh, some of the options. Working hours are standard for everybody, you must conform. Dress codes, if they have a uniform, you must conform. Compensation guidelines. If you hold a job in a big company, everybody at the same job type or job grade gets the same salary. That's another type of conformity. Code of ethics, company rules about how much you can spend, what the price is when you sell or deliver a service to a customer, you must conform. And the way you communicate in the business, you must follow the company's rules about communicating by email, by phone, and the way you write letters to customers. Those are elements of conformity that companies need. But for each company, these rules might differ. These are things you must follow because they're required inside the company's rules for you to keep your job. These are compliance. Let's go on. Conformity in the workplace can be dangerous because it can lead to groupthink where individuals prioritize group harmony over critical thinking and independent decision making. This can result in a lack of innovation, creativity and productivity and can stifle individual contributions and perspectives. Does everybody understand that, Karen? Okay, all right, let's stop the slide. So can I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, soldiers being trained in the army, do they have a choice about what time they wake up, what time they go to sleep, or what time they wear their uniform, do they run or how fast they run? Do they have an option? They don't, right? Because if they don't do what they're told, they'll be thrown out. So they have to conform. Do you understand that? All right. So if soldiers join the army, are they still thinking for themselves? No, because whilst they're in training, their instructors say, you don't think, you do as I tell you. Am I right? Yes or no? That's what happens. You're told when you join the army as a cadet, as a recruit, you're told on day one, Take off your watch. You don't need your watch anymore. We'll tell you what time to wake up and go to sleep. Don't think anymore. Do as you're told. So they have to comply because that's the rule. But once they come out of the army, they go to a war, fight a war, those soldiers need to start thinking again, right? They need to start thinking because if they don't think on their own, there's no teacher or drill instructor to tell them what to do. There's no one to say, hey, get out of the way. There's a missile coming. If they don't use their brains and start thinking independently enough, they'll die. But people sometimes misunderstand to what level take conformity. Do you understand that, everyone? To what extent should you be conformative? To what extent should you be compliant? Does everybody understand that? Can you imagine a company? If you tell all your salespeople to forget about being creative, and you tell them how to speak, how to smile, and how to look, 
Will the attractive female sales girls be able to attract customers? Probably not, because the company said to Asa, tomorrow when you go to see a customer, you are to wear black jacket, black shirt, black pants, black shoes, and you are to wear no makeup. So if Asa goes to see a general manager in a company and he doesn't like black, well, guess what? Asa's not going to get the sale, right or not? Asa won't get the sale because the company is controlling her creativity. What they should say to Asa, Asa, we want you to dress so that you have a professional image as a sales representative and that customers see you as a professional. But they should not dictate that she should wear black because black might make her feel uncomfortable. She might not be able to deliver her personality and it will affect her results and her achieving her KPIs. All right. So when companies set rules for you to comply with, those rules must be within a reasonable range. Because if they're not, ladies and gentlemen, what will happen, basically what will happen is the company will find that people like Asa, people like Jacqueline will eventually lose their interest in creativity they will stop thinking for themselves because they're afraid that if they do, their manager will tell them off or they will not be popular amongst everybody else in their department that they're trying to outdo or outsmart their colleagues. But that's okay to outsmart your colleagues because you want to be more successful. But some people don't know how to measure when conformity needs to come to a stop. Conformity in a business should only go so far. The minute you go overboard, you basically damage the ability of the people that work and you basically damage their ability to produce results. You basically damage the growth of the company and its profitability, and you will probably end up losing customers. Can everybody hear me? Wave your hands if you can hear me, please. I'm worried. Okay, good stuff. Excellent. Okay. All right. So let me go back to my PowerPoint presentation. So remember, conformity going above what's acceptable can result in a lack of innovation, lack of creativity, and lack of productivity for any business organization. And can stifle individual contributions and perspectives. For example, if somebody told Felix, every day you come to work, you must only wear pink. And every time Felix looks in the mirror and sees him wear pink, he feels uncomfortable. He feels like he's lost you know, his image. He would not be able to deliver with the same results because he's always worried about his friends or neighbors seeing him wear pink. That would affect his ability to give his best contribution to the business. Do you understand that, Felix? Good, excellent. Okay. All right. Okay, let me just go on. All right. A person going to work dresses in the same style as his colleagues in order to fit in. An employee takes drugs because they don't want to appear boring when all their work colleagues are doing it. A person walks around the airport like a zombie acting very passively to fit in with other business travelers that are walking around the airport. All of these are elements of conformity, which can affect the way people feel, the way people behave, and the way people are able to be productive. Does everybody understand that, ladies and gentlemen? Yes or no? You understand, Felix? Good. What is the difference between individuality and conformity? Is there any relationship between the two? Who, who can tell me? Is it important for us to remain individuals, important for us to conform, or should there be a balance? Who can answer that question for me? Can anyone tell me? Which one is more important, individuality or conformity? Who can answer that? Okay, come on, I want to see you all participate. Why is it always the same five students? Okay, go ahead. Um, Shaquille, what, which one is more important? 
Conformity or individuality? Well, I think both are important in their own domains. One should maintain a balance. Uh, sometimes when you need to conform, you should conform, but you also maintain your individual character, your individual identity and your genuine thought when it is needed. So as you given the example of a business, sometimes there are situations when we have to conform like the working hours, the dress code and all that, but in certain situations, a business has to maintain its individual character it's, uh, to build its own personal brand and uh, so that uh, to propagate the, the genuine creative ideas. Very well answered. So you might have to conform to a certain number of rules at work, but when you walk away from work, you leave those rules behind. And you also need to be able to conform so that you're able to keep your job and be productive at work. And you must have the common sense to know what conformity is and how far to take it. And management in any organization needs to know what the actual line is between what should you force to be conformed and what should you leave up to your individual team to use their natural ability, natural appearance and instinct. Do you follow that, Shaquille? Thank you. Let's talk to someone else. Um, who else wants to answer the question? Go ahead. Anyone? Anybody else want to answer the question? Karen? You had your hand up. Go ahead, Karen. Uh, okay. Go ahead. What's your answer? Uh, conformity is important, uh, especially in a work uh, environment. It's good to conform because it will help you in your daily works in terms of adhering to the the things that are, you are, you are you're supposed to do while you are at work. Yeah, but In the idea here, Karen, is how much conformity, because conformity can limit your ability. So I understand what you're saying. There's certain rules you must follow, but you must also be able to think for yourself, bring new ideas to help the business improve. Do you understand that, Karen? Yes. Good on you, mate. Thank you. All right, let's go on, guys. Um, did anybody else want to add to that? Yeah, I've got another hand up. Go ahead, Priya. Good afternoon, Priya. Hi, good evening, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, for me, it's better to be a unique individual than uh, to conform to society. Because of conformity, destroy a personal growth and development. Okay, we need to express our originality and by conforming to what other want us to be we squander and any chance uh, any chance of uh, achieving uh, achieving self uh, acceptance very good excellent priya you need to know what level of conformity and how much conformity because the minute you break that barrier it becomes a negative or a disadvantage you follow what i'm saying yeah understand. thanks priya thank you so much Okay, let's go on. Let's talk to um, Samir Darwish. Hi, Samir. Go ahead. Are you there, Samir? Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Samir. Yeah, I just uh, have uh, one point to say. Yes, go um, ahead. I feel like uh, conformity in business is more related to, um, to more practical or technical things. Uh, uh, not uh, not so deeply related to one's personal identity or the identity uh, that uh, that are uh, essential to it. So I think even if we conform uh, with each other, uh, which it, which is, we are with each other in some uh, uh, company, that doesn't mean that we should. Uh, take off our uh, essence, our uh, individuality or whatever, because right. uh, because we have two, uh, let's say, two levels of uh, of things, of characters, of uh, whatever, of behaviors, something yes. related to our deep sense of self and something other, uh, which is more related to technical or practical things within a company. That's right. No, you're right. You're exactly right. What you've said, Samir, is exactly right. 
So basically, when you conform to rules of work, you conform to the mandatory rules like work hours, stress standards, and the job you're employed to do. But you must still retain your own way of thinking, your own ability, and you must be able to act as the person you are and be creative with you are. Conformity should not limit your creativity, but the way you define it as technical and still retain your own ability to think and perform, Samir, is the correct answer. Thank you so much for your input, Samir. Thank you. Can you hear me, Samir? Okay, thank you. All right, let's talk to one more person here with their hand up. Amy, go ahead, Amy. Hi, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, for me, I go for balance. Why? Uh, for example, the um, data, data privacy. Before, we don't have data privacy. And then, we start doing the data privacy. So, they start doing it, the conformity. So, it means everyone is a starting a starting follow this rule. Although, it's too difficult for telecommunications to adapt. Why? Because the data privacy is their business. It, it, okay. You know what I mean. All right. I understand. All yeah. right. So how do you, so? Okay. Go on. What are you going to say? Continue. For, for for me, it's balance. We need right. to balance the conformity. Absolutely. So you need to draw a line. What are the things you need to yes. conform to in order to keep the job? And what are the things that you need to actually use your own? motivation, your own thinking, your own ability, and show your passion in order to achieve results. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Amy. Okay, thank you, sir. I, Amy, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can Good. hear you. Did you understand what I just said? Yes, sir, I do, I do understand. Okay, thank good. You. Okay, good. Amy, do you find that you're still trying to conform today? Today, everyday life, can you give me an example with things that you're still trying to conform with? Um, I think I am go to the individuality because I, me, I'm trying to improve myself than following others. You, I wanted to ask that because I wanted you to share that with everybody else here. Amy has improved so much since I first met her as a student. She's gone from a very quiet girl to a girl who now attends every session that I run, and she always asks questions. Amy, I am so goddamn proud of you, and I can't wait to see you graduate, and I want to be at your convocation online. Keep up the hard work, Amy. You are somebody who doesn't conform with your friends. The only thing you conform to is achieving your goals in life. Do you understand that, young yes, lady? I am you. so proud of yes. you. God bless you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, let's go on. Um, let me talk to another person here. Amira, so nice to see your hand up. Go ahead. Hello, Amira. Yeah, hello. Hi. Sorry. Tell me about your example and what you understand about conformity, young lady. Yeah. Um, I just gave an example. Uh, the conformity in business become more dangerous, like what happened in my business before. Yes. The, yeah, the items that we avail from other countries are actually copies of different brands, branded. Right, so, and what happened? So we hardly uh, being updated for more up, more branded products. We can't run uh, behind them. We can't compete at right, all. Right, absolutely. Right, and why was that? Because the people who design the fashion were copying somebody else, conforming to a proven brand on the market. And that's wrong because every business should dig its own line and its own trail. You might get an idea, but you should never copy another brand. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, Amira, you need to learn this when you go into business again. And let me just give you some example. The fashion business, Amira, is one of the hardest businesses in the world. Do you understand that? Yes. Um, 30% of people who go into fashion fail in the first year. Why? Because what they do is they go and buy a Versace dress and think they can copy that in China, right? But the fabric they use is cheaper. The stitching is not exactly the same and the color is not exactly the same. 
because Versace would actually have the fabric design made by their designers and the color would be made especially from them for them. No one else knows the mix for that color. So these fashion designers seem to think a red Versace red and a normal red for any other factory um, is the same. It's not. So what happens? They spend $100 making 50 pieces, copies of a Versace dress. They only sell 20 of them, right? Because somebody who wears a Versace dress is not going to wear a copy of a Versace dress, right? But if they took the shape of the Versace dress and tried to make it in a different color using a different fabric and change something about it so it looked different to Versace and tried to market it with a new brand, they would have a much better chance to selling it. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I'll give you an example. I pay like $50 for a T-shirt, right? And my biggest fear is going to a T-shirt shop in Singapore and buying those $10 T-shirts. I don't do it, all right? So I go into designer Japanese T-shirt shops and, you know, Korean T-shirt designers, and I pay $50 to $70 for a T-shirt, but I only buy one of that print, okay? And every time I go there, the girls say, sir, why don't you buy another one? I say, but it's the same design as last month. All right, so people need to conform or the brand needs to conform to customer expectations. But if you're just copying another brand, right, what happens? You're a copycat, okay? So what makes, what makes a fashion business successful? Every time you release a new dress, the next one should be in the pipeline, right? So today you release five new dresses, two weeks later, there should be another five coming because what happens to your business if you don't do that? Eventually, your regular customer will not buy the same product again. They want something new. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying, Amira? Yes, sorry. There Do you know so how much... fashion houses work, Amira? Do you know how the big fashion houses work? Let me give you an example. If I own a big fashion house like Yves Saint Laurent, my designers are already designing next year's fashion. Do you understand that? So... This year's fashion is already being designed. It's already in production and they have a schedule. You ship this in January, this in February, this in March, this in April, this in May, this in June. Every month there's something new coming out. If not every month, every two months. But they are already one year ahead as far as design and production are concerned. Do you understand how serious the fashion business is? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. Are you still in the fashion business, Amira? I stop it. There are a lot of damage that, that I didn't uh, expose. All right. Well, listen, if you ever want to go back into it again, talk to me first. All right. Maybe I can put you in touch with some industry gurus that can guide you and give you some advice because you can lose a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing. All right. Yes, sir. Because there's MOQs, there's copyright laws. There's factories that copy your designs. There's China factories that take your design and then sell it to 50 other people running businesses like Amira without Amira knowing. There's all sorts of things that you have to be careful of, all right? So if you're interested in getting help, let me know and I'll put you in contact with someone, all right? Yes, right. You're welcome, Amira. But can I ask you, Amira, do you understand what conformity is and how important it is to business today now that you've attended this lesson? Yes, sorry. Good on you, Amira. Keep up your focus, Amira. It's good to see you every week. I want to see you graduate soon. I want to be at your convocation. I'm so proud of you, Amira. Thank you so much. Thank you, sorry. Ramadan Mubarak, Amira, if you're fasting. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's go to the next question. Is there any other questions before I go on? Come on, I, all these faces are not talking to me today. Mia, Mia, Fo, are you here? Where are you, Mia, Mia? I want to see you. I haven't seen you this week. Open your microphone, young lady. Hello, Mia. Hello. Hi, how are you today? Uh, I'm good. What do you understand by conformity? What does it mean? Uh, conformity is working with rules and follow, uh, follow other rules like this. Is but right? is it good to do that in business or can it be dangerous? Yes. 
Wow. Is conformity good in business or not? Not. Right, okay. But you understand what I'm saying, right? You understand yes. my lesson? Yes. Good on you, Mia. Keep on smiling. I want to see you graduate soon. God bless you. Okay, let's go on. Let me go on with my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so let's go on, ladies and gentlemen. So a balance of individuality and conformity allows you as individuals to talk and everybody shows respect by listening and paying attention to what you're saying as an individual. You feel psychologically safe. You feel like you're mixing with people that respect you and that will motivate you to work harder. Let me go back and ask you a question. When people, young guys or young women join the army, when they go through recruit training, are they taught to, con are they required to conform or is it compulsory? It's compulsory. Do the army want them to be individuals and talk and express their own views? They don't. They're told to shut up, do as they're told, only speak when they're spoken to. They're told when to shit, when to eat, when to sleep, when to wake up. They have no choice. That is part of their training. However, as everyday individuals, that doesn't work in society. Do you understand that? Because their army training is only for three months. It's not for the whole of their life. But the mistakes are when people come out and feel like they have to conform all their life. It's like somebody like Mia says, oh, I'm going to start a business. I'll just go and copy Starbucks. I'll come up with a logo that's green. I'll say that my coffee is as good as Starbucks. But the simple fact is, is Miat's coffee beans are not roasted in the same factory as Starbucks. So they're never going to taste the same. Why? Because Miat has always thought probably that it's easier to copy than to think. Am I right, Miat? Just as a hypothetical example. Do you understand what I'm saying, young lady? And I know you don't do this. I'm just using you as an example. I want to motivate you so you can become a big businesswoman one day and you can buy me coffee. All right? Deal? Good girl. All right. The psychological safety of each member in the group is positively affected by the team's ability to succeed. Let me go back to soldiers who join the army in the Philippines or in any country. There's 20 soldiers in the group. Okay? If one member of the group cannot run or doesn't pass the exercise, who gets punished? The whole group, right? The 20 of them. So the psychological safety of knowing that everybody in your group is following the orders, conforming with instructions, and being able to measure up to the standards puts the whole group at comfort. But if there's 20 men in the group and one of them always fails, and the drill instructor makes them all do 100 sit-ups every day because that person failed. Do you think that person is going to be liked or are they going to hate him and treat him badly because he's not conforming to the standards? Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Okay. So there is a difference and a balance in individuality and conformity. You must always remember as an individual or as a business, you must know the line where to draw the balance. All right? Got it? Okay. Conformity versus identity. People conform in group or aspiration group members to ensure desired signals of identity are communicated effectively, but diverge from out groups or other, they want to avoid being confused with to avoid sending undesired identity signals. Let me ask you, what was common about Michael Jackson's image when he, when he appeared? Was it his conformity or his identity? He was never conformity. Michael Jackson's voice was different to every other singer. The way he colored his skin was different to every other singer in the world. The leather jacket he wore, which was designed for him, was totally different to any other jacket ever designed by a pop star. So was he more towards conformity with other pop stars 
or was he trying to maintain an identity? Who can answer that question? You can answer the question about Michael Jackson. Put up your hand. Yes, Amy. Amy strikes. Amal, Amy. Okay, you both get to answer. Yeah, Amy, go ahead. What's the answer? Hello. Hi, sir. Uh, for me, it's his identity. Because he Thank you. Only it one. definitely was. One. Definitely <laughs> was. What about Madonna? Do you think Madonna is more about conformity or identity? Uh, I think for me, it's mixed because... Um, is having the Britney Spear together with the Madonna. It's like it's the same thing, passion. Yeah, I think she's well, a Britney mix of. Is, yeah, she's trying to copy Britney Spears, but trying to have yeah. Madonna identity. Where if she tried to follow Michael Jackson strictly an identity, I don't know. I don't know if it'll work for her. She's not one of my favorite pop stars, but a lot of my colleagues love her when she sings. They pay a thousand dollars to go to her concert. I wouldn't. I just love to hear her music without looking at her, but that's me. So I do agree with you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay let's go to the next person here. Yes. Um, Amal, go ahead. Uh, identity. Identity. So Elvis Presley, was he conformity or identity? What do you think? Do you know Elvis Presley? No. You do? I don't. Mom? No. Oh, you're too young for that. Okay. Elvis Presley was the king of rock and roll. I'm sure Amala in his young days used to go to discos with his Elvis Presley glasses. Okay. Elvis Presley used to have his identity. His identity was his hairstyle and the jacket he wore just like Michael yes. Jackson, all right? Yes, sir. These pop stars like Michael Jackson, Amal, all focused on identity. Thank you, young lady, very good. All right, let's talk welcome, to someone sir. else. You're welcome. Um, yes, Raquel, what's your answer? Go ahead, Raquel. Hello, Raquel, unmute your oh, microphone. Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah. I did, uh, sorry. Identity? For Michael Jackson, yeah, it's identity. And what about Even Madonna? the movement, the, the dance. Uh, Madonna, yeah. Also, Identity Elvis or Presley, conformity? Who? For Madonna, uh, Madonna is it more uh, identity. identity or conformity? Identity. She have her own style, she have her own way, her voice, everything. The same but like to you, Michael Jackson. But don't you think she's trying to copy um, Britney Spears with her words? Uh, no, I don't think so. I am not sure of that, but I don't think so because Madonna is a way, uh, I mean, he's older than Britney. I don't think so. Okay, all right. The I, style, I, 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 you know? Well, to be honest with you, recently she's been trying to copy lyrics from Britney, but I think in the past she was totally identity, but I think now yeah. she may be getting older and running out of ideas. So she's looking at the younger stars and trying to go down their road, but I'm sure she's got so much money that eventually she'll go back. But I, I do agree with you. Um, originally she was all about identity. You know, when I was a young exactly. teenager, she used to come to the Melbourne Cricket Ground. I used to spend $1,000 just to go and watch her. Would I watch her now? Probably not. <laughs> but that's me. Yeah, <laughs> even and, and, and the ticket, uh, I, I do remember that the ticket also, when you buy a ticket, uh, that was a long time ago in the Philippines, very expensive. You well, know? You know, I can suggest to you, you don't go to her concert and wait till she puts out the video. It's much cheaper. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. Talk to you soon, Raquel. Have Thank a good you. day. Okay. Who's next in my list? Um, let me find the next person in my list. Hold on. Okay. Victoria. Hi, Victoria. How are you today? Go ahead. Hello, sir. Do you hear me? Yeah, good evening, Victoria. Go ahead. Yes, sir. For me, Michael Jackson is very unique. So it's identity. Great. Excellent. Okay. And what do you think of Madonna? Identity or, or what? Well, for me, it's a mix, sir. She has her own identity, but then she's also like what you are saying. She's into the... Uh, uh, like the trend. Right. So she's trying to use conformity to stay profitable. Would you agree with me? To, stay, on you, mate. to stay on the, like what, uh, to be accepted and to be. <laughs> to stay in the pop chart. I understand. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Victoria. Okay. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. So does everybody understand what I've said so far? Yes. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, let me give you some words of wisdom. In order to succeed in business, the business must write its own lyrics to the song it wants to play. The business must paint its own map in order to make money. The minute a business copies another business 
all they will do is have a limited lifespan and eventually fail. Does everybody understand that? Did did Bill, Bill sorry? Um, did Bill Gates copy anyone? No. Everybody now is trying to copy Bill Gates. Google is trying to copy Bill Gates. Okay. Let's talk about Steve Jobs at Apple. When Steve Jobs came up with the iPhone, did he copy anyone? No. It was his own scratch. It was his own idea from nothing. Now everybody's trying to copy the iPhone, even Samsung. Am I right or wrong? Okay. All right. Good. All right. So conformity versus identity. People conform to in-group asp or aspiration group members to ensure desired signals or identity are communicated effectively, but diverge from the out groups or others they want to avoid being confused with to avoid sending undesired identity signals. That's like you girls, Raquel, tomorrow you go out with all your girlfriends and suddenly three of them change their hair color to blonde. And there's only five of you in the group. Two weeks later, one more girl becomes blonde, but you're still not blonde. So every time you go out with them, you feel like you're not part of the group. So what will happen? You want to bring your identity into the same group. So they look at you as part of the group. Now, that becomes your own decision because you don't have to do it. You have to decide whether that's important for you or not. You understand that? Yes or no? Good. Excellent. Okay, let me give you some quotes before I go. Do not follow where the path may lead. Instead, go where there is no path and leave a trail. Do you understand what I mean by that, Raquel? Do you understand what I mean by that, Amal Arif? Okay, do you understand what I mean by that, Maylin Duko? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to remember something I keep teaching you. When I ask you a question, do not shake your heads like monkeys. Wave your hands, please, as respect to me. Because when you shake your heads, I feel like you're bored with me, all right? So always wave your hands, scratch your face. I don't know, touch your nose, but don't shake your head. All right, guys? Does everybody understand that? Okay, good. Thank you, Raquel. I'll remind you again next week, Raquel. Okay, all right. Okay, Raquel just shook her head. That's why I had to say it. Thanks, Raquel. When you graduate, Raquel, at your graduation, I'm going to shake my head. Congratulations, Raquel. Okay. Good on you, sweetheart. Keep on studying. Okay, let's go on. In the words of Steve Jobs, we're here to put a dent in the universe. Otherwise, why else do we want to be there? Be here. All right. Can I ask you a question? If I don't want to make a change or leave a mark on this universe, why else would I want to be alive? Why? Think of how much it costs to stay alive. Eat, drink, sleep, pay bills. What's the point? There has to be a goal that you want to be successful and leave your mark on the universe. Your children will once say, my mother was successful. My mother graduated. My mother started a million-dollar business. My mother got a PhD. Like Amal one day is going to get a PhD and tell baby Amal when she's born. Do you understand that, Amal? Yes or no? Everybody, do you understand that, Victoria? Do you understand Steve Jobs' the word, the words that Steve Jobs has put out? We're here to put a dent in the universe. Otherwise, why else even be here? There's no point in living. No point to continue running a business if you don't want to bring something new to the world. You might as well go and work for someone. Unless businesses understand and realize that what Steve Jobs put on paper 30 years ago makes sense, then they may as well close the business and go and find a full-time job. Do you understand that, everyone? Does everybody understand what I said? Does everybody understand the words of Steve Jobs? Ladies and gentlemen, I need to remind you of some things. After this week, all messages, class um, timings, links for Zoom to join um, 
this talk or leadership will only go out in Telegram. So the next time you join one of these sessions, you will only receive the link in Telegram. My dear students, ladies and gentlemen, as my administrator will tell you, moving forward from tonight, please make sure you have a Telegram account and please make sure that you advise the Telegram account to your consultants if you haven't already done so, so you can be added to the Telegram group. Do you understand that everyone? Yes or no? Thank you. Starting in the month of April, this is our schedule moving forward. Week one of every month will be this talk. Week two of every month will be leadership series. Week three of every month will be this talk. Week four will be your rest period. So you can go out on Saturdays, hug your boyfriends, have a romantic weekend out and not have to listen to my lectures. So on the fourth weekend of every month, you don't have to study with me. I want you to go out, find boyfriends, find girlfriends. Gentlemen, if you're married, you stay home and look after your wives. Ladies, if you're married, you don't go and find a new boyfriend, have your husband shoot me for teaching you the wrong thing. You stay at home and cuddle up with your husband. Husbands, you stay at home and cuddle up with your wives. You don't have to listen to me, all right? So starting in April, next week will be leadership. The following week will be this talk. The last week will be my rest day and your day to go out and have fun with your families, boyfriends or girlfriends. Mr. Amala, for you, you go home and look after your wife, sir. You understand me, Mr. Amala? You're newly married. Thank you. Okay, Amal, you go out and find yourself a boyfriend, Amal. Do you have a boyfriend, Amal? Okay, well, it's time you started looking around, Amal, making yourself famous with some girls, you know, go out with your girlfriend, start mixing, read a book in the library, look around, but don't break mummy and daddy's rules, all right? Don't say Wally well, told you, all right, Amal? <laughs> okay, be a good girl, Amal, all right. Okay, Priya, do you have a husband, Priya? Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, Priya? No boyfriend, no girlfriend, no husband? So on the last week of every month, Priya, your homework is like Amal. Find yourself a boyfriend to talk to, read books together and learn, and maybe he can join and study with you, all right? I want you guys to start looking at making yourselves comfortable, make yourselves happy. It's always good to have a friend that you can talk to. So after every lecture, Amal can call him and say, listen, Time for you to take me out for dinner and coffee. Today, we're going to talk about conformity from the lecture I just attended, right, Amma? Okay, good on you, Amma. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, once again, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Wally Rada. It's my absolute pleasure to have you join me for this talk. Um, let me tell you that the next this talk I'm doing, we're going to go into something totally different. Um, we're going to go back to things that relate to certain countries and certain markets, all right? So we're in the next this talk, we're going to look at business in the Asia Pacific, and then we're going to look at business in the European part of the world, and then we're going to go to the African part of the world. And what I'm going to do through each of those this talks, it look at what types of businesses are thriving, how they're making money, what the advantages and disadvantages are for those businesses and what sort of businesses you can think of if you want to go and open a business in those parts of the world. All right. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? And please, if there is a subject you would like this talk to present, please send it to me. Drop me a WhatsApp. I don't want long winded messages. Just say, hi, Mr. Wally. I'm Victoria from this talk. Can you please um, prepare a BIS talk about this subject, all right? Give me as many ideas as you like. If I cannot do it, I'll get one of my colleagues to do it, all right? If it's not my area of expertise, I'll get somebody else to do it. Does everybody understand that? Well, please don't send me a message. Can you tell me how to find a boyfriend? I can't teach you that. I'm no good at that. I need someone to teach me how to find a girlfriend, but I'm already married, okay? So I can't teach you that, okay? Samir, can you teach them how to find a girlfriend, Samir? No, Samir's camera is not working. I love your hat, Samir. I want a hat like yours. Can you get me one? 
Where did you buy the hat, Samir? Open your microphone, Samir. Where did you buy that hat? Uh, Samir's microphone is not working. Both me and Mr. Amala want a hat like you, Samir. Can you arrange two for us, mate? I'll pay for them. Thanks, Samir. Um, okay, all right. Uh, Shaquille, do you have any questions? Are you asleep, Shaquille? Wake up, Shaquille. All right. Rockwave, do you have any questions? Okay. Karen, Karen Lamia, do you have any questions? Okay. Roseanne, do Austria, do you have any questions? Rosanna, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions, Rosanna? Okay, Rosanna, next time I want to see you on video. I don't want to see a poster. All right, please. I want to see your smile. Good, excellent. Thank you. Uh, Hermia, or Hermina, sorry. Do you have any questions, gorgeous? Thank you, Hermina. Keep up that beautiful smile. I'll see you at the next pistol. I'll see you at the next leadership session. Sarah, do you have any questions, Sarah? You put up your hand. I want to talk to you, Sarah. Good afternoon, ma'am. Tell me, what's your question? Good afternoon, sir. You're welcome. Can I have your number, sir? Sorry? Can I have your number? Uh, Mr. Mr. Amala, can you share my number with everybody at this talk, 4064? Uh, he will put it in the chat group in just 30 seconds, all right? Thank, everybody thank is welcome you, to contact me at any time. Well, please, please, if you send me a message, say, I am Sarah Kang Kiang from BizTalk64, studying DBSM or studying PGDBM, and I, I need your help, or here's my suggestion, all right? If you don't tell Thank me who you, so you are, I don't know how to answer, okay? And always Thank give me so three much, days to answer, three days minimum, okay? I will get back to you, all right? Any no, questions? Sir, no, Thank you. Thank you, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, when you attend this talk, I want you to write down what I ask you to do. The last time we did this talk, I gave homework. Only 46 out of 191 submitted their homework. Okay, listen carefully. Listen carefully. I'm not going to point out names because they might get upset with me. If I dedicate my time to give you this talk and you want to graduate and you want to be successful, have the common courtesy to do the homework. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do not send me messages saying, oh, sir, I forgot to write down the homework. Do you understand that, everyone? Yes or no? Thank you. Today, I want you to do this. This is your homework. Your homework will be sent to me by email at my email address, eh.wally1 at gmail.com, which my co-host will put in your chat group now. Your homework is to reach me by midnight on Monday, the 3rd of April. You are to tell me some things that you believe you conform with today. You are going to tell me why you conform. Is it because of compliance or what is the reason for your conformity? And you're going to tell me which of these you think are necessary and for which of these do you believe it's time that you started using your own identity, your own personality, and started using your own clear thinking skills? Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? I expect to receive 187 homeworks by Monday night at 12 midnight. Does everybody understand that? Everybody that's enrolled for this session today needs to send me the homework by midnight Monday. 3 April. You know, guys, if you don't do the homework and I can't correct it, you will never learn anything. If you send it to me and I don't answer, it means your answers are correct. Usually if I send an answer, it's got red comments everywhere. I still have about 30, 40 homeworks. I promise I will answer you next week because I've had them for two weeks, but you will get my answer next week. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? All right. From me, my colleague, my boss here, Mr. Amala. Thank you, everybody, for joining BizTalk 64. Um, you should be able to watch BizTalk 64 on our social media at our 
YouTube channel, The Apex Stories, sometime by Thursday next week. Um, I encourage you to please recognize Wally, recognize what you're learning from BizTalk by going to social media and leaving a message. Wally, we enjoyed your lecture on conformity in business. Wally, we are inspired by your words. Wally, could you please deliver a BizTalk talk on this subject? If you're too shy to put it on social media, send a message, all right? Thank you so much for joining me today. And I wish you all a very pleasant weekend. Good evening and God bless you all.